Today's featured video of the day is Katie Thurston still in the news talking about uh, her relationship just moved to San Diego and responding to critics that she's not over Greg. So let's just quickly take a look at it. Uh, Katie says, Greg and I have spoken privately and moved on. You should too. Here's the full transcript here. Uh, someone replied to her very snarky. You know, the best thing Katie could do is not respond, but I understand I respond to bad comments all the time. So I understand you want to like correct people and it just never helps. It's an insatiable amount of people that uh, are messaging you from behind the, you know, from like, like Barb over here. Like, well, this person, someone is hurt, dot, 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 dot. Imagine going up to somebody in real life and going, oh, you look hurt. You know, some stranger, they'd slap you. Katie goes, nah, someone is happily engaged. Ring, bitch. And then Melissa goes, for now, wink. Oh, Melissa. Take a long walk off a short pier. Go for a shower in that ocean. How rude. Kevin says, like, how do people like this even exist? You would never say this to someone in person. Keyboard warriors, SMH. You know what, Kevin? That's right. These people don't exist in real life. Take it from me. I've done thousands of hours worth of stand-up comedy, thousands of shows. I, I, other, other than maybe the occasional uh, alcohol confidence... Um, never do, uh, does anyone talk to you like this in real life. It's a shame that this exists. Um, this is a product of the free internet and um, we just need to avoid it completely. Like, you know, Katie actually mentioned she doesn't say the R word, Reddit. She doesn't go on there anymore just because you can't handle, it's like it's like being a sinking ship. You're constantly trying to defend yourself and it's just, it's just unlimited. Melissa says, anyone who uses their platform to bully and harass a person who simply was expressing his own real feelings all while publicly ripping him to shreds does not represent a trustworthy person nor a person there for the right reason. <gasps> Katie goes, Greg and I have spoken privately and moved on. You should too. Thank you for your feedback. Okay? So that's Katie's response. And look, look. So they spoke privately. We all understand Katie came off like abrupt and aggressive and, and she was like defensive and all, all those things we all possess. We all possess the different dark feelings that come out of, you know, exposing yourself in a relationship and not getting what you thought you wanted in return. It's like leaving, it's like Katie just had to do that on national TV and she didn't have the grace, time, wherewithal, ability to overcome and cope and all those things that people normally have that Melissa normally has in her daily life. Katie didn't get that chance. She did on national TV where Bachelor producers made a good buck off of it and her uh, show had tons of views. And she, you know, just watched how it all played down with Greg, she, whether it was the edit, what, whatever it might have been, she wasn't where she needed to be. And uh, she came out and she said, woof, that was a little rough. And, uh, you know, people, they were split down the middle. They, some took her side, some took his. Uh, some comments here. Who asked for this? This sounds a lot like Mag Maggie and I have spoken in private. It's all good. Funny how uh, she aggressively comes at people in public in front of millions, and uh, but she supposedly hashes it out in private. Okay, fair criticism, fair criticism. But, you know, she's she is trying to move on with her life, it seems. And it seems like Greg is too. And maybe they could, maybe they'll get to a place where they comment on things where they go, oh, it was a little harsh, but there was so much that was left unsaid. We needed to have that conversation. Who knows, folks? Who knows? I don't know if we're going to get any more closure on our end, but the point is, it's like, it's not for us. It's for her. If she got the closure she needs and they're moving on, then so be it. And also, uh, I'm sure Katie will learn the lesson. Melissa isn't worth your time, Katie. These Melissas that exist out there, they're not worth your time. You're, you're, up, you're up to bigger and better things, and there's going to be people as you ascend the totem pole that are going to be trying to pull you down. You do you, Katie. You do you. So here's Katie in, uh, you know, so so we, we posted yesterday, Nick Fial had his podcast and he was criticizing Katie, uh, you know, for moving to San Diego when her boy, when her fiance lives in Canada. And I, I don't think that's a fair assumption of what's going on. For all we know, Blake's going to be moving to San Diego as well. For all we know, Katie's going to set up home in San Diego and then visit Blake all over the world. Who, who knows what's going to go down? But Katie spent her whole life in the Pacific Northwest, one of the rainiest parts of the country. She probably... Wanted to get out to a beautiful place where she has a bunch of friends. Not going to shame her for that. Here is Katie checking out her new apartment for the first time, which was found by John Hershey. Hershey? 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 Uh, found by John, and John, I, I guess, Skyped videoed it to her, and she kind of, uh, she kind of found it that way. <laughs> okay. Blake reached out to John to coordinate flowers for the new place, which, uh -oh. by the way... Cannot wait to give you guys a tour. Um, just got here. Very happy. I think Tommy's even more happy. Dun -dun. 
He's disgusting. You know, this is hard for some people to understand. Like, she's she's with her ex in the no. She was on a game. She's on a game show. Clearly, clearly, her she got thrown in the friend zone. In the, in that we're gonna they were gonna be friends. Who no problem. You know, better off. Good. They made a good friendship out of it. And how about Blake? How about the mental, the emotional intelligence, the wherewithal to coordinate flowers with one of Katie's exes from the season? Clearly, Blake is just a great guy. Clearly, he's got the confidence that is needed to handle marrying the bachelorette, especially if it's going to be long distance. Because when you do long distance, you need to have a lot of trust and faith in the other person. Good on Blake. You found a good one, Katie. Disgusting. He needs a bath. Hey. This cat's old, by the way. Okay, a little background about this place. I found it online and actually had John come take a look. And he did not do this place justice. I'm in this closet. Look, nice so closet. I can make this a whole other room. Ladies, that's a nice closet. Wow, double so decker. Here. We'll turn it into a little studio rental right here. Wow. There they are. Cheers in. Very nice. Okay, what's next? What's next? New place. Okay. Okay, we got Tommy the cat. Oh, he's got a new bed. Is that the closet? Tommy's got his own bedroom. Ah, that's very nice. Very nice. Oh, the, the jizz painting. Wow, look at this. What's this little greyhound thing? That's a cute dog. All right, so there they are, folks. Oh, clearly Katie's living in the past. No, Katie's moved on and she's happy. Uh, she's... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, people in the comments has, uh, said, uh, people find it so bizarre for men and women to be friends. Like, why is it weird? Katie has expressed she has a lot of guy friends. Leave her alone. Yeah, no, some people just live in some world where it's like, well, boys are the devil. Yeah, you can't be friends with a boy without blowing them or whatever case may be. You know, people are all over the place with this. But I think in 2021, people that are emotionally secure with their relationship can absolutely have a guy friend. And Blake can not be jealous of John. He can be like, all right. Uh, here are some roses. Get them to Katie. You know, keep her on the back burner until I'm gone. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So real quick, the story's not over, guys. Let me see where we got here. The story is not over. Dean Unglert rooting for Greg Grippo to be The Bachelor. A complete destruction of the show in a good way. So, uh... There, there's a lot going on here. I'll just I'll just read a couple clips here. I want it to be Greg Grippo. I liked Greg a lot. Greg is handsome. I know that he has issues with the process, I guess, but I think if Greg was like the guy for his season, I think things maybe go a, li a little bit differently. That's who I'm pulling for. Dean 30 exclusively told Us Weekly while promoting his and Caitlin's Mobile One partnership. What the hell is a mobile? Are they working at a gas station? The Help I Suck at Dating Coast added that he's firmly in the Greg camp. The 28-year-old New Jersey native telling Bachelorette Katie Thurston that he doesn't care about roses during their heated breakup may be a good thing for the ABC franchise. It's a complete destruction of the show in a good way. You know, like, he's not worried about the roses. He just wants to find love. Well, I mean, that's easy to say when you're on the on the side, on the Bachelorette. Greg obviously didn't care about the roses. He just wanted to be chosen. When Greg's the lead, he's going to have a responsibility to people, and he'll have to see it from the other angle, which I think was Katie's point. She was like... Greg, Greg, he was too in his head to have the grace needed to know that Katie's in a really tough position. He was only worried about his own victimhood there, where Katie had to, like, break up with these guys and juggle all of it and find out who was there for the right reasons and all that. Kaylin, for her part, rounded out Katie's finalists with her picks. I like Andrew and Justin Glaze. Andrew was just so sweet. And Michael A., they're all coming back to me now. So, you know, nobody knows who it's going to be. Um, it's got to be decided soon. The casting says they have done their wrapped up casting nine hours ago. Greg Grippo does questions while at the airport. Someone said, where are you headed? Shy town for the next two nights. The question is, is this a decoy? Is he heading to Los Angeles to announce he's the next bachelor? Nobody knows. I for sure don't leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. We'll go to the comment section right now and see what the live stream thinks. Um, Let's see. I'm gonna go all the way back to the to the uh, up to date comments here. Greg, uh, loved by you, says Greg doesn't have the capacity to be empathetic. That's the issue. So he wouldn't be there for love without looking like a hypocrite. Well, he's he would definitely look like a hypocrite. But also, you can understand he was in a he was in an emotionally like spiraled place. He he was in a dark place where he was so consumed and ruminating with his thoughts that he couldn't possibly think about someone else. Now. Is that something you want in a man? No, probably not. But did he learn from that and he'll change? We'll have to see. 
You know, people do learn from their mistakes. I was the type of guy who would ruminate and think, woe is me myself until I understand the other person's doing the best they can with the information they have. And I've learned to have compassion for people when they're, when they leave mean comments, when they are, when they're vitriolic, uh, when, when they're, they lash out because you understand anger and all the different, uh, energies that come like the dark energies they're just coping mechanisms for people who are just trying to survive. So when you understand someone's just trying to survive, I think you feel a little bit better for them. Now, I'm not saying you should be codependent and just like, you know, like lay down your life for the other person, but in the process of evolving yourself, understand other people are on their own journey. Uh, Natalie says, I can't take anymore, Greg. Well, that's it. Wrap it up. Natalie says, no. Jess says, can we not talk about Greg? Oh, breaking news. The comment section doesn't want me to make this video. I guess that's the live stream. Got to go. <laughs> just shut the thing off. Uh, yeah, we can get over this. Um, I don't hate Greg. I just hate how people make excuses for Greg. Yet berate Katie for responding to that behavior he had towards her. As a woman, it breaks my heart. Look, folks, the law of attraction. Like equals like. You know what I mean? The law of attraction. They were both, whether it was he who pulled her down or the situation that pulled them both down. They both got to a place where they didn't look good. All I, all I can go back to is Katie Thurston down on her knees, trying to keep him from leaving, begging him to talk to her and Greg walked away. Okay. Anything that happens after that is up for interpretation. You can say she didn't handle it well after that, but in that moment, she was as vulnerable as possible, begging him to have that conversation and he couldn't do it. Will that happen if he becomes the bachelor? Will there be a scenario where he walks away from them? Who knows? You know, we talk about like the runaway bride, we got the runaway Greg, you know, I like the idea. Like, I like the idea of evolution personally, you know, spiritually. I like the idea of growth. The question isn't whether or not people want Greg to grow. It's whether or not they think he needs to be doing this, you know, with the potential collateral damage of dozens of women. Right. So we'll have to see how all that goes. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. And that was today's clip of the day. Mm -hmm.